Today we want to talk about the meaning of the resurrection, the meaning of Easter. So Christians have just celebrated Easter, and uh, we got dressed up and came to church. We went home and had our ham and deviled eggs. We went out and searched for Easter eggs, and, and then we put it all away for the next year. Easter was over and done. But that's not how Christians have looked at Easter. In fact, the Jewish Sabbath was moved from Saturday for the Jewish people to Sunday for Christians because Christ was raised from the dead on Sunday. And we look at every Sunday when we gather for worship as a little Easter. It's a moment to pause and remember these events. They're not once and done for the year. This is an everyday part of our existence. This story of Christ's death and resurrection is our defining story. It's meant to change everything about how we look at the world, how we face adversity and suffering, and ultimately how we look at death and how we face it. So in this divine drama, God has come in human flesh in Jesus Christ. He's shown us the way, the truth, and the life. He suffers and dies on a cross, demonstrating what human beings have done to God when God walked in our midst, demonstrating our brokenness and our hate and, and all that's wrong in us. And then on the cross, he hangs there and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, as if, to, as if to make sure that we get it, that on the cross, God is experiencing pain as a result of our brokenness and, and our sin, and at the same time, offering his son, offering Jesus to atone for us, to redeem us from our sin, to change us from the inside out. But, but if that was it, and Jesus was laid in the tomb, he's buried, and it's over, then there would be no Christian faith. There would be no sense that any of the things that he said were actually true. His hopes, his dreams, his message all would have been buried in the tomb with him. But that's not what Christians say happened. On that very first Easter, Mary came to the tomb and she found the stone was rolled away and soon she's greeted by Jesus. She wasn't expecting Jesus to be raised from the dead, but her whole world changed when she saw the Lord risen from the grave. And as she saw Christ raised from the dead, she went and told the disciples, and soon they met Jesus. And over the next 40 days, there were as many as 500 people who saw the risen Lord. And this changed their world. No longer afraid, going out into the streets and proclaiming the good news, Christ is risen from the grave. And what they were saying was that in the end, evil and sin, hate, and even death will not have the final word. And as Beekner has said, the worst thing is never the last thing because of the resurrection. And so Christians face adversity and pain and, and, and the brokenness in our world with a sense that no matter how dark things may be for now, that's only temporary. And, and that temporary pain, that adversity might last us for weeks or months or even years, but we know that in the end, God has triumphed over hate, light has triumphed over darkness, that, that goodness and love have conquered evil, and Christ has been raised from the dead. This changes how we face adversity, but it also changes how we face death. Our own mortality is affected and how we look at mortality. Americans spend $2.8 trillion a year on health care, $9,000 a person, a third of that in the last year of our lives trying to postpone death as long as possible. But for people who really believe this story and trust in it, death is not the enemy we have to fear. We know that in the end, death is just a portal, it's just a passageway. And I'm reminded of those famous words from C.S. Lewis in the Chronicles of Narnia, where he describes what happens to the children who are the heroes in his stories. And, and you know, at the very end, they die in a train crash. I mean, you think, what a horrible ending, but that wasn't really C.S. Lewis's ending. After the train crash, we read these words. But the things that began to happen after that were so great and beautiful that I cannot write them. And for us, this is the end of all the stories, and we can most truly say that they all lived happily ever after. But for them, it was only the beginning of the real story. All their life in this world and all their adventures in Narnia had only been the cover and the title page. Now at last they were beginning chapter one of the great story, which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever in which every chapter is better than the one before. This is what Christians believe that happened in the resurrection of Christ, that he proclaimed to us with power that death is not the end, sin, hate, and evil will not have the final word, and that in the end, life conquers death, love conquers hate, light conquers darkness. I'm asked from time to time, in fact, I was just recently asked by an atheist. He said, you don't really believe this stuff, do you? I mean, you don't really believe that, that Jesus walked out of the tomb? And my response to him is the same response I give to anyone who asks, I not only believe it, I'm counting on it. And I'd invite you to count on it too.